from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. us on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah, and welcome to Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you are going to be a part of this special program. Really want to just give God praise and thanks for Dr. Paul and Miss Jan Crouch for their tireless efforts to advance the kingdom of God. We're so thankful for them, and I know you're thankful for them as well. I encourage you to continue to pray for them, pray for the ministry of TBN, continue to support this ministry because we truly are reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, today's program is a program I'm extremely excited about. I believe it's no accident that you've tuned in, that you're watching. I believe that God has uh, orchestrated this moment to be a divine moment where he's going to say something to you and speak something to you. I have a great friend of mine who's a pastor here in Orlando, Pastor Carlos Sarmiento, who's going to be joining me on the set in just a few minutes. And he's going to be talking to us a little bit about a transition that he went through in his life, his ministry, and his church as God really began to readjust his focus and really began to redefine his destiny. It's going to bless you. It's going to be exciting. And I know it's going to strengthen you and encourage you. Right now, I want you to Lift your hands and I want you to get ready to worship the Lord with Amy Gabriel as she sings Hiding Place. We worship you. Hallelujah. You're holy. You're worthy of our highest praise. Thank you, Jesus. I will 
Praise the Lord. I pray that you felt the anointing and the Spirit of God as Amy was singing and ministering. You know, there is a precious anointing that is in this studio right now. And I'm so excited to introduce to you a friend of mine, a pastor in this city who's doing an incredible work for the kingdom here in Orlando. I want you to open your heart and get ready to receive the word of the Lord as we welcome Pastor Carlos Sarmiento. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Carlos. Bless you, so good to see you, brother. So good to see you and so glad to have you here with us. I know that you've been in Orlando for many years. Yes, I have been. Uh, been in ministry here in Orlando many years, but a few years ago, God really began to deal with you and and uh, really started to direct you in a different way. Yes, he did. And I want you to share a little bit about that transition, and what God is calling you and causing you to do right now in our community. Talk to us a little bit about that transition. Well, like, you said, you, like you said, I've been in Orlando since 1986 in full-time ministry. Mm. And I served nine years as youth pastor for a healing evangelist here locally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 1995, traveled for five years until 2000 uh, internationally, nationally as an evangelist. And then in 2000, the Lord asked us to start a church. Uh, it originally was called Living Waters Church. Mm -hmm. and I've started, had the pleasure of preaching yes, there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You, you, Great you, church. You brought you in a couple of times and, you know, the power of God broke out and many were healed, <laughs> so it was awesome. Amen. Um, but uh, in, nine, in uh, 2005, you know, after five years of having the ministry, the Lord really encountered me um, on May 8th of 2005. And from that encounter, uh, the Lord pretty much... Uh, really gripped my heart and uh, began to deal with me personally because, you know, we had five years of successful ministry. The church was exploding on our hands and we're in the small side of the west side of Orlando, a little mm -hmm. town called Okoe. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when the Lord told me to go to Okoe, I said, Okoe who? Where is that? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but the Lord made it very, very clear because I tried to do everything in my power not to go to Okoe because I had no idea. I don't know anybody there. Mm -hmm. Small little town. So we finally, when I finally surrendered and said yes, we started the church on April 23rd of 2000 on Easter Sunday morning. And then for the first five years, our ministry just exploded on us. And we had several hundred people attending multiple services. We had revivals taking place and just power of God showing up. And so in the natural, everything was just going beautiful. And it was, mm -hmm. you know, God was doing some awesome things. But on May 8th of, uh, two, of, of uh, 2005, something happened to me. And what had happened uh, was I had an out-of-body experience in the middle of the night. The Holy Spirit came and encountered me. And uh, literally, I was taken to heaven. And um, from this experience, I was, I was privy to a conversation between the Father and the Son. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a, I wasn't a big time student of eschatology. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't study a lot about the end times. I did my, my religious thing or my good Christian thing of reading through Daniel and reading through Book of Revelation sure. on an annual basis. But something was different about that, that this one night. Because in that encounter, um, like I said, the, the Lord and the Father were having a conversation. And to my surprise, they were talking about the end times. Mm. And um, it was, I, I was stunned. And all I know, Jonathan, is that when I was in this atmosphere, I mean, I'm skipping a lot for the sake of time, but when I was in this atmosphere, I knew that I was granted permission to hear this conversation. Mm. You know, because at first I thought to myself, what should I do? Should I run to them? Should I fall down? Should I rejoice? But I just knew that the Lord had granted me permission to stand there and listen to this conversation. I'll just, I will never forget that experience. I was in, wow. in this big, wide, open spans of a room. Um, and then all of a sudden, I began to hear clearly, after I felt the peace that I, had gr I was given permission to listen to this conversation, I just listened and I listened. And to my surprise, they talked about the end times, the difficult hour that the earth was about to go through. They <laughs> talked about some persecution, I mean, Persecution is not a new thing. It's already taken place, mm. you know, in the nations of the earth. Yes, sir. But yes, sir. I, I see some difficulty coming to America. I really, mm -hmm. really do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I heard. And I was shocked by this conversation. And then um, as the conversation went, they, also, they were also talking about the, the greatest outpouring 
of the Holy Spirit. And I think this is what one of the major mistakes the church does when it comes to end times is that they focus primarily on the difficult hour that's sure, to be. the persecution. But that, the persecution yeah. of the Antichrist. But in reality, it's about the greatest outpouring. I love it. I and the greatest it. harvest that the church has yet to ever experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's how this, this conversation between the father and son was, was ending, was they were talking about the greatest revival, the greatest miracles, My the goodness. greatest harvest My of goodness. souls, the greatest deliverances are about to take mm. place. Mm. And um, in the midst of that conversation, of course, my spirit man was just jumping yeah. as I'm hearing all this, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, near the end of that conversation, the father says to Jesus, it's time, son, go get your bride. Now, Jonathan, all I can wow. tell you is, wow. to me, the bridal paradigm was not a very well-known theological point for me. Oh, I knew that, you know, John had said, you know, I'm the friend of, I'm the, friend of the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. But to really have an understanding of the bridal paradigm as taught throughout the New Testament mm -hmm. and even throughout in the Old Testament, I didn't, have a, I didn't have understanding for that. But it was like in an instant, the Holy Spirit gave me this download and I recognized <laughs> that the church is meant to be the bride and that the, at that time, the bride in her current condition isn't ready right. for what the Lord wants to do. Right. And so from when I, when, I, when, I, when I heard the father say, it's time, son, go get your bride, all I can tell you was I didn't rejoice. I didn't jump up and down. I had this horrific fear hit me. Mm -hmm. It was the most terrorizing thing I'd ever felt in my life. And I was puzzled by what I was feeling, but I couldn't contain myself. And all I can remember was when I heard the father say that, I just began to violently shake my fists and I screamed out loud at the top of my lungs, no, we're not ready. Wow. And I wow. felt like so, I felt like every ounce of life, like I had disappointed the Godhead for even, for even saying that. Mm -hmm. Because I thought to myself, oh, why would I say that? And when I had said that, the moment, the moment I said that the Father and Jesus, they looked at me, didn't say a word at me, but immediately over my left shoulder, I heard this very strong, authoritative, but very gentle voice at the same time. And the voice said, I know the ones who are ready. And in an instant, I was back in my physical body. It was four in the morning. I wasn't in bed because when I, when I was taken up, Mm -hmm. I literally saw myself still laying there in the bed next to my wife. I was hovering over, my, over the bed, and then I realized an angel was actually carrying me wow. and then took me to heaven. Wow. But when I came back out of this encounter, I was no longer in the bed. I was on the floor, on the side of the bed, on my knees, curled up like this. And I remember when I came back to myself, I felt like if life, physical life, had come back to me, and I felt this, this heat was rushing up and down my body, and I cried out, Oh, my God, what was that? What was that? And so I threw myself down. I was so shaken by this experience, brother. I didn't know what to make of it because I thought to myself, am I not ready? Is my church not ready? Who was I talking about? I was really sure. disturbed. And for two hours, I laid there wondering, you know, what, what was this all about? Mm -hmm. And then finally, the Father said after two hours, the Holy Spirit spoke to me after two hours. I just laying there. I was really troubled by, you know, that whole experience. And uh, the Lord says, son, if I took you home right now, you are ready to meet me for eternity. But in the condition... This is the key right here. In the condition your heart is in right now, mm -hmm. you are not ready for the next great move of my spirit. Well, say that again, because I don't want people to miss that. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah, you know, and, and, and because, again, I was thinking, uh, here, when, when, I, when I heard, when I cried out, no, we're not ready, I was so troubled by that. And when I came back out of this encounter, this vision, this out-of-body out experience, whatever you want to call it, I was troubled. I literally was tormented. I lay there for two hours asking God, forgive me for saying that. And then finally the Lord brought comfort to me and he was, he was assuring me of my eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. He says, son, if I took you home right now, you are ready to meet me for eternity. But not for the next But month. in the condition that your heart is in right now. Not, 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 let me just say this. I wasn't having any major sin in my life. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't being unfaithful with the ministry. There wasn't, there wasn't any in, in, uh, un, you know, lack of integrity when it came to running the ministry. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything in my power according to the way that I was raised up in ministry. Right. And right. I just felt like it was God's way of saying, son, it's a new season for you my and the goodness. body of Christ. The, 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 the emphasis of ministry and the emphasis of what my church is supposed to be doing is basically this. Stop staying 
being a child or stop just being a servant and stop, don't get stuck at being a son. It's time to become the bride. I love it. Different levels of intimacy. Wow. And that's what wow. I felt like the Lord was saying is, son, where I am taking the church and the body in the days to come is going to require a new level of intimacy. And if you want to be a part of it, I need you to prepare your heart. And that's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. You know, hundreds, thousands of pastors watch TBN. It's a place where we go to get fed. And I, I know there's a lot of viewers that are watching today and that are being blessed, but I really feel that God is anointing you in the words that you're speaking to stir up pastors. When you said that, that thing to me, it hit my spirit. We, we become so busy trying to meet yes. our spiritual requirements that if we don't cuss and sin and do this, all of these the big sins, well, we're going to go to heaven. But God is looking for especially yes, ministers, pastors to say, I don't want to just meet the requirements. I'm looking for people to put in overtime. Absolutely To right. get themselves ready for this next move of God. What are you doing as a pastor in leading your congregation now? What is the flow? What, what are you guys doing at, at your church that is preparing you as the bride? Okay, well, what, first of all, what the Lord immediately had me do was, to just to seek the Lord. Like, I mean, my prayer life went through the roof after that encounter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, Lord, show me how to get ready. Because when he said, you're not ready, my, my thought was, how do I get ready then? Mm -hmm. And so I sought the Lord and I got connected with some godly men and some godly people. And so we made a transition. And here's what, if I could trumpet anything to any man of God, any pastor, any, any head of ministry is this. Jesus said this when it came to the ministry. He says, my father's house is not a house of preaching. Right. My father's house is not a house of evangelism. Mm -hmm. My father's house is not even a house of discipleship, even though those things are important. It's not a house of leadership conferences. It's not a house of worship seminars. But he said this, my father's house is a house of prayer. Right. But you have made it into a den of thieves. In other words, you've been ripped off. Ministers, churches, you've been ripped off. You have, you, I mean, and when, when he says, it is, my, it is written, my father's house is called, that's our identity. Mm -hmm. The identity of the body of Christ is primarily we're called to be a house of prayer. If we would make prayer the priority mm -hmm. of our ministries, I am telling you, everything else falls in place. It does. And so what we have done as a ministry is we, I mean, the Lord literally shook our ministry upside down. We went from hundreds of people in five years down to 125 because the message, we lost 75% of our church huh. because we went and we shifted directions and we made prayer the priority. Right now, our ministry has 110 hours of prayer every week. That's incredible. We're open primarily incredible. from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, live prayer. That's unbelievable. Live sets, live music, by, by God's grace, by, next, by spring of next year, we'll be 24-7. So our message has completely changed. We become love sick addicts of Jesus. <laughs> and I believe what the Holy <laughs> Spirit it. is doing right now is restoring the great commandment. Mm -hmm. If we truly want to love our neighbors, how can we effectively love our neighbors if we don't love God? Right. And that's what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying. So the emphasis is we've, 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 we, uh, we have these core values that we focus as a ministry. I mean, intimacy being number one. Number two is intercession. Number three is the urgency of the hour. Mm -hmm. Number four is the lifestyle of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, because we want to we see the signs and wonders. We want to see the lost come in. And number five is the, is the sermon on the Mount lifestyle, living Matthew 5, 6, mm -hmm. and 7. And so this is what the Holy Spirit's been doing at OHOP, the Orlando House of Prayer. And I'm telling you, it's just, it's just, it's shaking us. Wow. And we're, it's just a whole new concept that we, that, that the Lord has allowed us to encounter and to experience. You know, it doesn't give me a lot of joy to say this, but I'm not surprised that 75% of your congregation left as you begin to make this transition because it is a forgotten thing. You're right. Prayer is a forgotten thing. I heard a troubling statistic and I, and I know you, you hear the same kind of stats that I hear, but I heard that a pastor of a church Praise an average of three minutes, yes. not a day, a, a week. week. I mean, I can't even imagine that. So if the pastor's not praying more than three minutes a week, what is the church doing? Absolutely and, right. And the whole thing is that God is looking to get his will, that which is in heaven, exactly. down to the earth, and he has to have a middleman. Absolutely right. To do it. And the inner says that one. 
that is exactly it. talk right. to us about that the, the the intercessor bring because i don't think people understand the importance of the kingdom god is sovereign he's omnipotent he can do what he wants to do he can create how he wants to create but he is desperately looking for man to stand in the gap and be that intercessor Absolutely. to bring what's in heaven on earth i love what you just said earlier that when jesus said this you know you know when you pray pray our father mm -hmm. which art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So it only makes sense that if we want the kingdom of God to come to earth, then we simply do what is the will of God in heaven. Mm -hmm. Let's study the activity of heaven. Mm -hmm. We know that in heaven there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no sinners, there's no immorality because that's the will of God. But we have to ask ourselves, what is the agenda or the activity of heaven that keeps the kingdom of God exploding and expanding. You know, what the, you know what the answer is? Eternal prayer and eternal worship. Wow. If, you, if you will study, wow. if you will study the revelations of, of the, Isaiah, Moses, mm -hmm. David and John, the revelator, all four of them had open visions of heaven and each of them saw 24 seven prayer and 24 seven mm -hmm. worship. Each of them saw that. Mm -hmm. they, saw, they saw the throne. They saw the activity of the throne. I mean, John sees it even more in Revelations 4 and 5. He saw the activity, lightnings and thunderings, and there was rumblings, you know, and so there was, that was proceeding from the throne. The power of God proceeds from the throne. Why? Based upon the activity around the throne. I love it. And what's happening around what the word. throne is are the four living creatures and the 24 elders, which represent the redeemed of all humanity. Mm. 12 of the Old Testament elders and 12 elders of the New Testament represent all of redeemed humanity. They're worshiping around the throne with the living creatures 24 seven, day and night, night and day. I, Isaiah saw that, David saw that, and Moses. That's what we've got to do. Mm -hmm. And I am believing for Central Florida. I'm believing that the Lord is going to sovereignly bring the body of Christ together. Thank you. And Jesus. they will have solemn assemblies, cry out for our city, cry out for our state, and mm. cry out for our nation. You know, Pastor, we're, we're living in a day and age where perversion is accelerating, bondage and sin, uh, the line of acceptance between gross and morality continuously fades into the abyss. Economically, our nation's in trouble. Unemployment is at an incredible rate. The housing market here in our city has, I mean, it's unbelievable how low it's sunk compared to when I came here five years exactly. ago. It's, it's, we're living in a time where darkness is trying to take complete dominance and authority. And it's not going to be our shout that keeps him out. It's not going to be our good Come works. On. It's not going to be preaching another incredibly revelatory, deep sermon that people shout about and go home and do nothing with. The body of Christ has to answer this call. God is looking yes, for sir. a midwife. Yes, sir. He's yes. looking for a woman to birth Amen. and to travail. I told our church the other night, I said, you know, many of us are going through pain, grief, sorrow, people are losing this and losing that. I said, it's time to begin to turn that pain into purpose. Come on. Let that pain make you push. Let that pain cause you to birth something mm -hmm. that, that God is trying to get through you. And I just want to commend you, sir. I mean that with all of my heart for listening to God. Because when you have success, which I know you did, I came to your church, I saw that you guys were thriving, you were exploding. When you are having success, it's easy to change direction when you're not paying your mortgage, when you're losing staff and you're losing people, then you start seeking. But when you're in the middle of succeeding, and prospering and God speaks to you, I'm gonna change everything in your life and your ministry. And for you to be willing and obedient to do that, I absolutely commend you and I celebrate what God is doing in your church and in your ministry. And I'm thankful that you have a place here in this city. I appreciate your vision, I appreciate your faith. I want you to do something for me if yes, you sir. would. We've got just a few minutes left. I'm gonna ask you to pray as we get ready to conclude the program, but can you take just two or three minutes to talk to that pastor, to talk to that elder that's become, uh, I'll just be blunt, they've become complacent, they've become apathetic in the church. Or thing, discouraged. Or just discouraged. Just minister, I really feel God's anointed you today and brought you here to talk to pastors and ministers. Take a minute and let the Lord speak through you Amen. to the pastors. Well, I just first wanna say, uh, man of God, woman of God, you're called of the Holy Spirit. The gifts and the callings of God 
are without repentance. So there, there's no question about his hand and his calling on your life. Sometimes as we go along through ministry, and I'm one of those, one of those sometimes or someones, I went through that. And where we get, we get comfortable with ministry, we get discouraged, and we kind of just go through the motion. But I want to tell you something. God called you, number one, to be a voice, a messenger in this day and this hour. And he's looking for those, you know, Jesus had 120 out of the 120. He had 70. From the 70, he had 12. Out of the 12, he had three. And out of the three, he only had one that was close enough to put his head on his chest. He's looking for those that will be intimate with him. And I believe beyond, beyond anything else, you're called to minister, you're called to preach, but more importantly, you're called to minister to him. God called us both kings and priests unto our God. And so the Lord wants you to be, to be an effective king, to expand the kingdom, but we become effective kings as we're effective priests ministering first unto the Lord. So I want to encourage you as a man of God, get back to the place of prayer. Make that the priority. Why don't you take your church and, and make, make your, you come together with your staff and pray together. Take the first two hours of every, of every day and say, Lord, this is my tithe of time for, for, for my church and my staff, and we're going to seek God until God breaks through. I promise you, if you fulfill that first and foremost, God will break through, God will encounter your heart, and God will make all things come to pass. He'll fulfill your dreams and visions. So I want to pray for you right now that the Lord will just encounter you with dreams and visions. Thank the you. Spirit of God thank would you, speak Lord. to you. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name, for every man of God, every woman of God watching right now this program, Hallelujah. I thank you that it's not by coincidence you brought them here, but Spirit of God, you caused them, even right now, to turn onto this channel and to watch this program. And Spirit of God, right now, by the authority given to us as ministers of the gospel, I ask you, your word says if we loose blessings, that it will be on earth, it will be released and loosed from heaven. So we loose blessings of God. We loose renewal spirits. Oh, we loose revival. Bible spirits. Yes, Lord. Reloose strength and restoration of the call of God and the anointing upon your life in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray, encounter them. Encounter every pastor, encounter every evangelist, every teacher, every apostle, every prophet. Encounter every minister, full time or part time, yes, in this city, in yes, this Lord. great state of Florida. In the name of Jesus Christ, release your dreams. Release your visions, release angelic encounters for your glory. And Father, I ask, raise up your bride in Central yes, Florida. Lord. Yes, Lord. Raise up the bride of Christ. Awaken the bride in Central Florida, I pray. In Jesus' name, have a bride worthy of your name and worthy of your glory is our prayer. In Jesus' name, uh, <laughs> amen. And I amen. felt the anointing as you were praying, Pastor. Amen, brother. And I believe that pastors and leaders received a little bit of an, you know, they were ignited as you were praying. I really believe that and I really felt that. And you know, I want, I want you uh, here in the Central Florida area, when you get a chance sometime to go visit Orlando House of Prayer, I want you to do that. I know that God will touch you. If you're looking for a local church, it's a great church to be planted in, but you better be serious about God <laughs> because they're going to put you to work over there. Pastor Carlos, it's been such a blessing to have you with us. We pray that God would just continue to strengthen you and encourage you and bless you. Our church is joining you in prayer Amen. in this city. We pray every Monday night. We have hundreds of people gather in four locations throughout the city. We call it the I-4 Lockdown, where we're just agreeing and believing God to do great things. So we're praying with you. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. Maybe we'll do some prayer you. meetings together sometime. We need to do Amen. that. Amen. I'd love that. that. Thank you for joining us. We're so grateful that you were able to spend these few moments with us. I know God spoke to you and he touched you. We always want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, a testimony, I'd love to hear from you. Call the number on your screen. We love you and thank God for you. God bless you. And don't forget to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.